sets the forgetting curve. And a booster event is anything, and this is the one technical piece of jargon I will use for you. A booster is anything that produces effortful recall. Effortful recall, where you've got to go in there, and I ask you a question about, the, about that leadership seminar I gave you, and I said, what is the first step in consensus leadership? And I ask you maybe a day after the training. That question forces your brain to go back and think, oh, what was the first step again? Bring it back into mind. That process of recalling information causes your brain to say, that was useful, let's keep it. But there's still some loss over time, and so you can present a series of booster events in the hours and days after training, and the net effect of these is to produce, is to cause the brain to say, hey, I used that information, I'm gonna keep this. This is cool, this is useful. Conversely, if you provide no booster events, no opportunities for the person to effortfully recall in the hours and days after training, they will forget 90% of it in a week. I would suggest, if you are providing excellent training experiences, and not providing a systematic program of after training. You're providing great training, but no after training. If you're doing that, you are committing training malpractice. <laughs> because you know, you know from your own training experiences, you forget all of it. It's just gone. So let's talk about ways to actually deliver boosts, the different kinds of boosts, and how we're using them within the Google paradigm. This is, we can send out boosts like this. And you go, you attend a training seminar, shows up on your cell phone, big text message, whatever. You go up there, you click on it, and boom, quiz question comes up. According to the training, the first step in consensus leadership is friendships, trust, authority, goals. Oh, what was it? What was it? No, maybe, I think it was trust. To get immediate feedback, you're right, according to Albright, establishing trust is the first step. Turns out, if they get it, in terms of reinforcing the knowledge, so strengthening the memory trace, it doesn't matter even if they get it right or wrong. If they get it right, that's proof they've got it, they effortfully recall it, it'll stick. If they get it wrong, provided you provide corrective feedback that has exactly the same effect on long term retention. You just have to get them interacting with the material, thinking positive, with, whether it's helping, uh, whether they get it right or wrong, always provide corrective feedback. You can do other kinds of booster questions. Um, you can ask a poll question. For example, what's the best way to motivate an underperforming employee? Now, this is an opinion question. They went through a training on motivating people. You're asking an opinion question. Should you reward small successes, gentle threats, direct threats, peer pressure? In your opinion, what's the best way? Now, there's no right or wrong answer here. And a person comes in, they respond, and then they see a, the results of the poll. You know what? They can go into that poll and they can parse it. And they can say, I wonder what other men, how long if there's a difference between men and women and the way they responded. What about different demographics? But what's golden here is that they are spending time. Your learner is spending time with your content. They are effortfully recalling it, they're interacting with it, and all of a sudden, the stuff just sticks. You send out. Now, this is an important point here. <coughs> What boosting is about is not to reteach the material. When you interact, when you cause a person to recall the information in the hours and days after training, what you are doing is reinforcing the memory trace so they don't forget it. You are not, decidedly not, reteaching the material. They've already learned it once, it's stored in the hippocampus. The problem is it's going to get it will fade, the memory trace will fade if they don't access it. So you do not use after training as a way of saying it again. In fact, the evidence is very clear that teaching and that reteaching the same material does nothing, nothing to improve long-term retention. 
but it's our instinct as teachers to say it again. If you don't remember it, I'll say it again. No, 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 no. Once you've said it well, you said it once, you said it well, it's encoded, it's in the brain. What you gotta do is get it burner to use it. That's what causes it to stick, not preaching it over and over. God, I think some of this is right. Just thinking now, talking to my 15-year-old as I lecture him over and over with the same thing. He's got it. He's just ignoring it. Or he's forgetting it. What I need to do is to get him to build it into himself to make it part of his own adaptive systems. Um, the 